Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Yeah, baby, we're Ooh. live. We're live from Old Raleigh Distilling Company in Zebulon, North Carolina. Zebulon, North Carolina. That sounds like a different planet. It sounds does. Like an alien. It sounds yeah. like a cult. Zebulon. You. Um, I'm part of the Zebulon cult. Zebulon. Uh, but no, we are live, and we are back here with Conspiracy Cuisine on the grill. Hey, this he's back. This is the Tailgate Legends show brought to you by Killcliff CBD and GhostBed.com. Man, I'm excited to be here. I love being at distilleries, uh, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, you don't spend enough you know time at it. Huge fan of distilleries. So this is, a, this is a really nice place. I appreciate that. And then you are the owner, Brandon McCraney. Uh, Brandon, when did you start this place? Uh, we opened up uh, late January of this year, and uh, to get open is about four years to the date from the time I started this venture to the time we, we opened the doors. I loved watching it on social media. It was a blast. Look, we have a lot to get into today. There's so much in the sports world. We've got to talk about bourbon and whiskey because we can't be at a bourbon distillery and not talk about that. Correct. Uh, but there is so much. We've got the hockey playoffs. We've got basketball playoffs. We've got John Cena. Um, I can't see him. I don't know who can see him, see him though. Uh, China. China. Yes, yes China. Uh, China. For those of you who haven't heard and live under a rock, uh, John Cena went full cuck boy uh, <laughs> and apologized to the Chinese. <laughs> Got cucked by the Chinese Communist Party. Listen, I'm, I'm going to be real with you right now. I thought Taiwan was a country. Does anybody here, did any of the three of you guys know that Taiwan was not a country? Yes. Apologize to China right now in Chinese. I'll never do that. But did any of you know that for real, though? Um, well, according to China, they, they say no, but... According to China, I say fuck China. So, but did you know that Taiwan was not a country? Uh, he, according yeah, to who? It. In what reality are you living he in? He did not know. As far as I know, it is right. <laughs> I thought Taiwan was a country. Did you think Taiwan? Or did you know that it was not a country? I knew there was a loose affiliation there somewhat. Yeah, somewhere. All I want to know is if John Cena becomes a GI Joe, does he now have to wear a red communist beret? Yes. I think he should. Well, he might in, in Fast and Furious 29, because it's like the... Doesn't you know, he play like the American out. badass and a lot of the shit that he's in? And the irony here is... Yeah. Sure, but, but right now, like, to be honest with you, has anybody seen... Have you guys seen that video? Have you guys seen... You haven't seen the video where John Cena apologizes to China? Hilarious video. You guys should look it up. But he looks like a POW because John Cena has hair in the video, which is funny because <laughs> I've never seen John Cena with hair. Um, but he, he has hair. He looks homeless. He looks like a POW. He's doing the blinking while he's speaking in Chinese, apologizing to, to China. And what I think he was saying with his eyes in Morse code, because I know Morse code, was he was saying, I don't want them to stop funding Fast and Furious 9. Um, so I'm going to apologize to him when, because... Real quick, when can we stop with the Fast and Furious movie? movies. I've I, seen one Fast and Furious movie, and yes, it is Tokyo it's Drift. It's been since, like, 99, <laughs> dude. But, but, like, what are we doing here? I mean, I've never been interested in it. Maybe really? there's big fans out there, but even if I was a big fan, nine, nine. I love Star Wars. There shouldn't be nine Star Wars. Why are there nine Fast and the Furious? Well, Hollywood's desperate, baby. I, uh, they they sure need are. some content. I don't Nobody's know what's worse, the apologizing to China in Chinese or making another Fast and Furious, because have it's you ever all seen? Retarded. Have you ever seen Ernest Scared Stupid? Did you ever see that movie, Ernest Scared Stupid? Yes. Yes. Um, if you look at the John Cena video, he looks like Ernest from Ernest Scared Stupid. It's an incredible video. I've watched it a thousand times. I think his Chinese was mediocre at best. Not as good as Mark Zuckerberg's that time. You ever hear him talk? No. Did Come, he do it? Yeah, in Mandarin or Chinese. Uh, I don't know what's the difference. but Jeez. Uh, well, I mean, we got so much going on. We got the whole John Cena thing unfolding. Tim Tebow, where's he going? Is he, did he sign He got Jackson? signed, and it's, got it's a signed. big deal. People are upset about it. He's going to be a tight end. Um, I, I hope he does something. I don't have high expectations or high hopes. But I think Urban Meyer will keep him around regardless. But it's only going to stir stuff up. I've heard, um, you know, a couple of the blue checkmark brigades and the talking heads talk about how this is white privilege at its finest that Tebow got signed. I don't see the correlation. I just see that Urban Meyer likes his boy Tebow and he, you know, maybe sees something. In but, him. you know, we had Rob Jones from the Dallas Cowboys on the show. And when Jerry Jones, no, uh, when what's the coach that went to Miami? Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. Um, From Jimmy Miami. Jones. Jimmy Jones. Jimmy Johnson. Uh, all those J's. But Jimmy Johnson went to Miami, and he took Rob Jones back with him to Miami. Mm -hmm. um, you know, four-time Super Bowl champion, MVP, uh, Rookie of the Year. Um, and so what's the difference? I don't see any difference uh, than doing that. There isn't. Tebow is just polarizing. A lot of it isn't his fault. I mean, he's just, a, honestly, he's a nice guy. I bet if any of the people who are out here shitting all over Tim Tebow, 
was in a room with him for like 10 I minutes. I met him. Yeah, I, I bet him. they'd be like, how can I hate on this guy? He's just a good guy. He loves Jesus. I think that rubs some people the wrong way that he tells people he loves Jesus. I'm not sure why, but I mean, I don't, I, it's hard to find things with Tim Tebow that I can dislike. I understand it appears as though he's always trying to be camera ready and that, that video of him running shirtless through the rain when Listen, he was Listen, that's real deal shit. I've said this story on the show before. Driving down Palm Valley Road he's in the middle of the summer, it was 101 degrees, um, and I was driving out to the beach and we could see off in the distance a truck with its flashers on. As we get close, we're like, what is going on with this truck? There is a man hanging out the window of the truck, screaming and yelling. We're like, what, is, what kind of satanic stuff is going on here? <laughs> yeah, an emergency we, we or get, something. Yeah, yeah, so we pull up beside it. Tim Tebow, he's in high school, he's like a sophomore in high school, he's got a harness on, and he's pulling this truck down Palm Valley Road in the middle of the swamps of Florida. So he's the real deal, you know, and, and that was his sophomore year of high school. That's how Brandon, you military guys are train, you, Are right? you a Tebow fan at all? I am a Tebow fan. You are? So, yeah. I think the guy's a stand-up guy, great character, and you know, they're only hating on him because he's relevant. Yeah, well, true, right? Hate him because they ain't him. Well, he's relevant again, um, and as Tim Tebow re-enters the league, someone is going to be leaving the league very near and dear to my heart, and that's Adam Vinatieri. He is the goat, Dude, how the long goat has he kicker. Been, how long has he Forever. been around? Forever. I want 25 Holy years. Shit. I mean, he, he's, he was the oldest player in the NFL. Um, Tom Brady's the oldest player in the NFL who is not a kicker. Just thought I'd throw that Who in hasn't Vinatieri played for? He's only played for two teams, actually. Really? That's what's crazy is he was with the Patriots for a long time, obviously won three Super Bowls with the Pats, and was clutch every single time that he needed to be. And then he went to Indy, and he actually spent more time in Indy than he did with the Pats, and he won a, a Super Bowl with Peyton Manning and the Colts there, too. So he's got an incredible career, first ballot Hall of Famer, I think. I know it's, tif it's difficult when you're a kicker, but he was so significant. Um, he also played linebacker in high school, so he was a real football guy. He became oh, a kicker later on and everything, but um, I would love to see some old Adam Vinatieri linebacker high school highlights just to see if he could deliver a blow. But he is the greatest kicker of all time. Um, I don't think there'll ever be someone to have a career quite like his when it did, comes to that position. Brandon, did you play any sports in high school? You look like a solid stack, dude. Uh, I did a little, um, little wrestling back in the day. Oh, shit, you did. You did a little wrestling. I was a scrub. You are a scrub. 103 weight class, and that took me about two years to get to that. So. <laughs> and you, and you, were, you were a veteran as well, right? Yes, Air and, Force. Uh, Air Force, nice. And so you got out of the Air Force. Uh, do, you, do you follow sports at all? A little bit, yeah. I don't sports at all, so you, you've already got one up on me. Um, I don't sports for shits. Uh, what is your favorite sport? College basketball. Oh, oh. shit. College Tar -heels. basketball. Uh, NC State Wolfpack. Oh, okay. Wolfpack. Okay. So I'm Can a glutton it. for punishment, but uh, yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah, it's now, been do a you, while. Do you, ever been tailgate a for, do you ever tailgate for NC State games? Football. Yeah, football. You do tailgate for football. What's your, do you have like any kind of tailgate rituals? Is there something that's your favorite at tailgates? Something that you like to do at tailgates? Drink bourbon. Is Drink bourbon. a tailgate, huh? Yes. Really? Goes, sorry, I'm sure you go. I, I bet you go hard on bourbon. You're on Fuck brand. Seven days a week, baby. <laughs> uh, I'm a one-trick pony these days. Is good. bourbon. Yeah. Good. 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 I guess and you have to be what, right. What I mean. got you down the bourbon path? What would put you down that? Yeah. What started me down this path really was just uh, I tend to go down rabbit holes with things. I don't just dabble, and so I just uh, kind of fell in love with the art of it all. It, I think the beauty about bourbon and what appreci what people appreciate about whiskey is that. It takes time. It, uh, you can distill something today, and it won't be rolled out for a couple of years. And you don't know if it's a good product. Only the, uh, the consumers tell you that. Yeah, and I'm a consumer a right now, and it's a good product. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell, tell you right that. now. I'm drinking your, and this is your blended bourbon, right? It is, yes. And, and tell me a little bit about this blended bourbon that I'm holding in my hand. Yeah, so the blended bourbon, this is our signature blend, the Old Raleigh Whiskey Society. Uh, I want to create a blend, a small batch blend that was representative of the U.S., in that we have three distinct bourbons, different mash bills or recipes, and two of those mash bills consist of corn, malted barley, and rye, and they were aged and distilled east of the Mississippi, and then we've got a weeded bourbon, which is corn, malted barley, and wheat. How much of the rye do you have in here, did you, did you say? Uh, the rye is approximately 80% in there. I was going to say, because um, a dickel rye, uh, which is you know one of my kind of go-to ryes these days, um, I, I get that same cherry note that I get from the mm -hmm. dickle rye in here, but I love the spice note that the, that the rye gives you. And this right here, man, is so superb and so far above the dickle rye. I love Thank this you. bourbon right here, What man. kind I of rye? The dickle. Um, we can say dick and dickle anytime we dick, want dick, to. Dick, dick. Um, That's quite the compliment. Tickle that you your dickle. Man, saying that it's better than dickle. <laughs> oh, no. It's I mean, all, joke, all dick jokes aside. aside. This it is, uh, tickles this is, your dickle. 
there's so much complexity and depth in this bourbon. That was the first thing I noticed. Um, being that I'm a certified specialist of wine and a sommelier, I know a little bit about beverage. Humble brag. Um, and what I'm always looking for in beverage is that it has to deliver the sweetness at the front. It's got to give me a little bit of acidity down the middle of my tongue. And then I want to feel a little bit of that Kentucky hug, but I want something else in between. I want a little bit of, of uh, complexity and something to talk about. And that's where we can find that anywhere on the palate. Um, and what we find here on the palate is... One, we're trying to, to hunt what we have because there's a little bit of smokiness here, but there's a little bit of cherry. Um, I get a little bit of orange peel going on, and that might just be because I had an old-fashioned earlier that they smoked the orange peel, and that might have not left my mouth yet. Um, I have a stupid question, though. Yes. Because I don't know shit about anything. I just drank. Yeah, what, you can do a sports <laughs> a little what bit. What is the difference, if there is one, between whiskey and bourbon? All bourbon is whiskey, but not all whiskey is bourbon. Okay. And meaning there's specific requirements for a bourbon being 51% of the mash board's recipe being corn, uh, must be uh, aged in a new charred oak container, predominantly what you'll find it aged in a, a barrel, uh, distilled at no higher than 160 proof, barreled at no higher than 125 proof, and bottled at no less than 80 proof. I see. Okay. Distinguished. So, first of all, like I told you guys before the show, it's killing me that I'm doing a fast from alcohol because I can tell this is some of the finest shit around. So, Eric's breakdown literally made my mouth water, the way that you're describing <laughs> the flavors and stuff like that. For the listeners, can you break down the difference between bonded and not bonded? You say bonded and not bonded? Yeah. One yeah. has a gag ball in and the other doesn't. <laughs> bondage. <laughs> <laughs> not bondage. Yes. Oh. Well, we don't kink shame, so... So bonded is very specific, and, and, and that was actually created uh, about 100 years ago, actually over 100 years ago, and it was a measure of quality. So that was mm -hmm. back when they had, whiskey was getting pushed all over the place, and they were throwing all kinds of additives to it, and it was disgusting, and, and those that were making that quality stuff said, hey, we wanted a standard uh, that our consumers... To distinguish himself away yeah, from. Yeah, so what the standard is for a bottled and bond is it's got to be 100 proof. Uh-huh. Wow, Asia, that's high. Yes, uh, or that's actually my sweet spot for bourbon. 100? 100. That's professional. Got, got a little sting to it, and it's got to be aged at least four years and distilled in the same distiller season, which uh, back in the day in that time, it was, I believe, January to July uh -huh. and August to December, one or the other. And I think it's since changed those dates, but those were the requirements. Oh, and uh, stored or aged in a bonded warehouse. Nice. Thus bottled and bond. Well, speaking of bondage, and while we're on the subject of bondage, I love to participate in bondage, and um, I love to participate <laughs> in bondage while sleeping on a ghost bed uh, from ghostbed.com. Hey. They have been a loyal sponsor with the Dringer Bros for over the past five years. Everyone raves about them. Uh, they have super comfortable mattresses that last forever. They have a 20-year warranty, Brandon. Uh, name another freaking bed that's out there that you can get to your 19th year and say, I don't like it. I can't. 20-year warranty, yeah. man, on each mattress. They are made in the good old U.S. of A, uh, which is my favorite USA. part, to be honest with you, uh, that it's made in the U.S.A. You can try it out for 101 nights. If you don't like it, uh, you, you know, you can um, you can return it easily. But you it's want. Not, it's not a difficult, you it's not a difficult it. thing. You can just return it. Uh, each Ghost Best mattress has cooling technology in it so that you are hot at night, yeah, uh, hot that you are sleeper, not man. hot at night. Um, so you can literally stay cool while staying hard. Uh, right now, GhostBed is offering a flash sale 40% off because of, they're a new sponsor. Because they're a new sponsor. They're going big. Four they want to see some movement. 40% off of GhostBed bundles where you get a mattress and an adjustable base. Or you can get 30% off everything if you use the code DRINKINBROS. That's D-R-I-N-K-I-N BROS. Uh, GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros for easier access on that. GhostBed has an adjustable base that is best in its class for a very low price. You save thousands compared to others. How about Out there, that? the adjustable base has 15 massage modes, zero gravity, and some other amazing features. You can buy a mattress, like it, um, but you'll never get it for the same price because these are $35 a month, 0% uh, down, 0% financing. Um, just go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, my wife and I love them. Look, Ross Patterson, uh, his house got flooded during the, uh, the pipe burst in Texas. And um, he, he actually went out and bought his own ghost beds, even though we're all sponsored by ghost bed. He went in there, used the promo code just because he wanted to see what it was like and see how hard it was. Nice. Um, he said it was a great process. It, uh, it was easy. He's got uh, his top two top bedrooms uh, with the ghost bed and the adjustable bases. Um, hot, hot Bob just had a baby and they just put a new ghost bed in their house. So. Did they have the baby on the ghost bed? 
Nope, because they got it after they were pregnant, I believe. Oh. I believe. But the baby, I'm sure, would have had the higher IQ if he was conceived on a ghost bed. Confirmed. Well, it's confirmed, yeah. <laughs> um, confirmed. With, with our taints shrinking, and science says that our taints are shrinking, if you sleep on a ghost bed, your taints will not you know, shrink. Speaking of our, our taints science. shrinking, uh, we heard that on Rogan, right, with um, that, that nice doctor lady. Rogan had the, um, the mayor of Austin on. And it was kind of short compared to most Rogan podcasts. It was only like an hour and some is that, change. Is this Mayor, Mayor Wheelchair? Adler. No. So he's the governor. Oh, Governor Wheelchair. Governor Wheelchair. But um, Adler, I believe, is his last name. Now, what made him famous was he was telling everyone in Austin, stay home. Don't go anywhere. Well, he's on vacation yes. in Cabo. Oh, you know what? And it if you go to the all- last 15 yes. minutes for Rogan to ask him, I'm like, when the fuck is he going to ask him this question? He's like... Finally, he gets to, he's like, oh, well, you see, I was already gone. I was already on my vacation. And, you know, looking back at it, maybe I shouldn't have done it. And I just wish, you know, I love Joe Rogan. I'm, like, his number one fanboy. But I just wish sometimes he would go a little bit harder on stuff like that. Like, press him on that. Well, you know, it was funny because when we were in Austin, we were doing a live show in Austin um, for the Super Bowl. And there was uh, stickers on all the cash registers. Um, of all the bars that we went to. And it was some dude in a Hawaiian shirt, uh, some fat guy in a Hawaiian shirt. And I, I finally asked, I said, hey man, this is like the fifth bar that we've been to with this fat Hawaiian shirt dude on your cash register. What's, what's is that a Austin weird, you know, keep Austin weird type inside joke? He goes, no, that's from our mayor who decided to dip to Cabo while we were all here closed down for, for, uh, for COVID. So we all made these stickers and we all put them on our cash register. Which is hilarious, by the way. I think that's really funny. Uh, speaking of getting weird, politics, COVID, um, there's some new Trump news out. Oh, with, there is. Uh, Spygate. Which uh, is the weirdest thing. I, you know, I love weird. I love conspiracy theories. I, when I fucking saw this, it was like my whole world came together. <laughs> well... You know, as we all know, Trump has, was, is and was very polarizing, right? Whether you love him or hate him, somewhere in between. And I feel like the media is obsessed with Trump. Ever since he became president, obsessed with Trump. And he's kind of been laying low for a while, chilling with DeSantis down in Florida, it seems like. And they just decided to, you know, let's bring Spygate back up. That's totally relevant Which to Spygate what's going on. Spygate was a sports thing, for <laughs> those of you who don't know. Thing. For those of you who don't know, it was some bullshit, witch chase, witch hunt that the Patriots get spun on because and, and allegedly Spygate was that the, the video cameras were so exactly what it was is you have some sort of box right from I believe the 40 yard line on each side to film the game and right. every team does it and every team did it and Belichick like he always does eh, he pushes the rules just a little bit it wasn't too blatant but they were a little bit out of their lines right so Eric Mangini and we talked about this with Antoine Harris a little bit too on one of the first shows and um Eric Mangini, who was a former, you know, disciple of Belichick, went and snitched to the league. They did an investigation. The Patriots got fined, and they lost a first-round draft pick. They paid the price. And then Goodell got rid of all the Spygate uh, video. Now it's coming out now. So why does Goodell keep getting rid of all of the... All these videos. All these videos keep coming up, and then they just keep disappearing. Goodell is like any other politician. Can't use that word. (laughs) He's not a nice guy, and he's corrupt, let's just say. Screw, I've, I've gone on the record on the show saying, fuck Roger Goodell, okay? Especially if you're from Boston like me, you don't give a shit about Roger Goodell, and, and really no one should. No one should be on Roger Goodell's side. He is a piece of shit in every sense of the word. And apparently they're saying that some dead politician took a bribe from Trump because he was in cahoots with Robert Kraft to get, to get Roger it. Goodell to demolish Spygate's um, evidence, which I think is a load of shit, first of all. Why the hell would Trump care about that? He's been friends with Kraft for a while, but why the fuck would he care about something like that? But hey, now we're talking about it, right? And that's all they wanted to do. Back to talking about Trump. The guy can't fucking go away. I love it. Um, And that's because there's word that he's dropping this new social media sometime in June, Um, and I'm sure that's why they're starting to bring that back up. But, you know, I love a good... uh, I mean, it doesn't get any more conspiracy theory than that. Uh, Linking up with the Krafts, Killing but a but the only problem I have with that is, and it murder, it, 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 mystery, it mayhem, brings stuff back football. Up. What more could you want besides whatever uh, whatever Joe Puwak's cooking over yeah, there from Conspiracy, conspiracy Cuisine? Because it smells I'm gonna, amazing. I'm going to step out for a little bit with Conspiracy Cuisine behind us on the griddle right now. 
I'm cooking up some mussel po' boys, all right? Wow. Usually po' boys are fried. We're not going to do that. We're going to caramelize them down with some uh, bell peppers and some scallions and some Havarti cheese. Havarti cheese has got like a sweet, nutty funk to it. Um, I think I just did a nutty. Yeah. Yeah. In addition to that, here's what you're going to finish it off with or start it off with is some elote. Elote is uh, Mexican street corn. Um, it's slathered up in some special sauce and then rolled in fiery hot Cheeto dust. Wow. So wow. we can talk Cheeto about it. Cheeto dust. Fiery what is hot Cheeto, Cheeto dust? dust? I literally blitzed fiery hot Cheetos in a blender <laughs> and made dust. Can you snort that? And I was like, why if not? If you did, what <laughs> would <laughs> happen? Imagine snorting well, I, Hey, I'll put a line here. You want, to, you want to do a line of fiery hot Cheetos Ooh. on camera, buddy? What would it? Would, no, what, made you, what made you want to grind up fiery hot Cheetos? So, was it the bottom of the bag, and you were like, e, "Believe it or not, elo, elote is like uh, really big in the Mexican and Central American community, and it's it's literally a piece of corn that's boiled, then they slather it in mayonnaise, and then roll it in either fiery hot Cheeto dust, cheddar Cheetos. It's usually some sort of Cheeto dust, and then some kind of sauce. So. I'm just doing it with fiery hot Cheetos. That's what I do with my kids and also professionally all the time. It is freaking amazing. The sweetness of the corn along with the mayonnaise, the tartness of the mayonnaise, and then the fiery hot Cheeto. I mean, it's like, ooh, you're going to like it. Multiple food gasms. You're going to like yes. it. Yes, so, it smells good. Conspiracy I'm almost done it. I'm going to okay. step off camera and off mic for a little bit okay. and fire up some bangers for you guys to try, and we can talk about it a little bit more. We love, we love it, we'll man. We love you. it. Um, Sound good? Yeah, yeah, I love it. And and, and I think um, once you get back with that, we'll talk about the bourbon um, yeah, going I would like back that. and pairing that because I think just the smells uh, that were coming off of there, and I know that you picked that particularly to pair with bourbon, oh. and so we'll we'll go into that too. And I'm really excited. Thank yep. you so much, Joe. Yes, sir. You the man. Uh, what we got the playoffs? We got hockey playoffs. We, we got we basketball talked hockey playoffs. Last, There's last so much show. sports going on. If you want to hear hockey playoff talk, go back and and watch our last show with. Uh, our bro from What the Puck podcast. But I want to talk a little basketball playoffs because the Celtics are getting their asses kicked. Right? Now, do you, do you NBA at all, Brandon? Yeah, a little bit. You do? Yeah. Are you following the playoffs at all? A little bit, loosely. Little bit. I can't watch all the games because I'm here blending. Sure, but. sure. Yeah. Um, what is, who do you think, do you have a, if you had a, like a no shit guess right now, you had, you had 100 bucks, I gave you $100 and you get to go put $100 down. Do you have a team or no? Well, my team's always Boston. Okay. Uh, but uh, do I think they're going to take it this year? Probably no. not. Jalen Brown hundo? going down was the worst thing that could have happened. Who, where did you put that hundo down? You're on mybookie.com right now with $100 in your hand. I'll lose all my money. Uh, but <laughs> I, I'd love to see an underdog take it all. Like just Phoenix because, Suns. Uh, yeah. Oh, right? shit. Would, I, I want to see them Phoenix beat LeBron. <laughs> beat LeBron that. and the Lakers, who I cannot stand LeBron. He's my least favorite athlete of all time. He's an incredible athlete. Okay. Probably one of the best to ever exist, but he is Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. the, the worst. best to ever exist. One of the best athletes. One of the best, but not the best. No, no, you can't say that because he doesn't have that killer instinct, which yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe what separates him from people like Jordan and Kobe. But as just a pure specimen, he was made in a lab. I was thinking like. about Richie McCall from from uh, New Zealand. Yeah, All he Blacks. had to throw that in there. Uh, Fucking which rugby. Is a great rugby player. But by I would the love way. to see LeBron go down. He goes down with like. A slight touch and flops around like a European soccer player. Yeah, like player. what if you didn't flop around? Like what if you just played through that? You would he be can, a hero. He's a pussy. He is a bitch. LeBron but is a no bitch. There's no way, but those are all fake. You can stop faking things. He loves attention what? so much. He doesn't care if it's positive or negative or what. He just wants his face on the news it's, it's and people be, looking at him. That's got to be what it is because it has to be. Those flops are 100 percent fake. But you know why? He's so insecure. He's the most insecure athlete of all time. All he cares about is how many likes on Instagram he's getting and all these pictures they take. Do you think he gets more likes from flopping around like that? It's just, it's talked about. That's, I'm telling you, that's all he cares about. So there's a video where he gets, you know, touched yes. by Chris Paul and he flops around yeah. and then a little skirmish, a brouhaha sets between the Suns and the Lakers. LeBron then gets up and walks over as the skirmish is dispersing and goes right where the, the little fight was happening and takes a knee and goes down again, right where it was happening. So the camera can be back on him. He is so oh, all about himself. He's just attention hungry. He oh, just wants that attention. he's the most attention hungry person. And right now, I mean, the Suns are giving them a run for their money. Uh, they got really good young talent with Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton, and then the old guy. Chris I feel like Paul. that's what would happen if you invited Meghan Markle to a wedding. <laughs> like she would steal the fucking show. Yeah. Like even though if it, or even any if Kardashian, it was just like, even if you know, like you know, there's make a wish. Like if there's like this make a wish, I'm gonna be dead here. All I want to do is get married. So they just marry this little 12 year old girl to this little 12 year old boy just for the make a wish thing. <laughs> Meghan Markle would show up and fuck that whole thing over. Yeah. She would just like 
blazingly like put on the best gown ever, have a red carpet, it'd be all about her. And then complain about her oh. crime. Like she God. made me wear a different colored oh, dress geez. than I wanted to. I'm so we don't like Meghan Markle here. I hate I don't, Meghan Markle. And I don't like Prince Harry, who is so delusional. Which honestly, the, it's the most ironic thing. I, I feel like of. maybe maybe they they t- they're taking the same playbook as John Cena. Maybe because did you hear what Harry said? He was on Dax Shepard's podcast. And he said, I don't understand the First Amendment. It doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, what? The, no shit. No shit. That's why we kicked your ass. Yeah. England back in uh, yeah. the 1700s, 1700s and baby. said, suck on this, Harry. That's what the First Amendment's for. The fact that yeah. I can get up here and flip you off and say whatever I want. That's the beauty of America. Yeah. You'll the never fact understand that. We can, that. that we can say ish whatever we want and still get shadow banned on YouTube because mm. we are in a free-ish country. <laughs> uh, take that, Harry. Take yeah. it. Take Which, it right to the face. Just like a porn star. But back to the NBA playoffs that we were talking about. We t- your team's Boston. So being a North Carolina guy, you like the Wolfpack, NC State. So Duke and UNC are like the big brothers that pick on NC State. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's the way it is. It's a tough life. It is. Yeah. Kyrie, Kyrie Irving is a Duke guy. Yeah. I was amped when the Celtics got Kyrie Irving. I was so excited. He's a little weird with the whole flat earth thing, whatever. I'm like, all right, I can get past that. He's going to play for my team. Sign me up. He then gets a, a whole stadium full of Bostonians and lies to their faces and says, I want my name up and my number up in the rafters. I want to sign a long-term deal. The crowd's going nuts. Only to have him walk in free agency the next year. So screw Kyrie Irving, right? Now, just to add fuel to the fire, Kyrie gets asked about his return to Boston during this playoff series, and he makes this sort of subtle little reference. Well, let's just hope they stick to, the fans stick to basketball and don't do anything racist. There's no evidence that Kyrie Irving was mistreated in Boston, especially when it came to anything racist. And he just decides to slip that well, in there. Well, isn't Boston like the melting pot of the United so the States? So the thing is, right, <laughs> the thing is, this, th- there's been this old adage and this old trope that Boston is a racist city. Now, me being a suburban white kid, it's hard for me to just get up there and tell everyone involved in Boston that no way it's racist. Again, I'm a white suburban kid. So I'm sure everyone's situation growing up in Boston is different. However... Back in the day, Bill Russell was mistreated, and there was a lot of shit that was fueled by racist hate back in the day, back during the real true civil rights movement, right, when Bill Russell was playing. Bob Cousy, his teammate at the time, had his back through and through and was awarded the Medal of Honor for it. Oh, shit. And guess what? Trump gave it to him, so now everyone called Bob Cousy a racist. It's funny how that works. The irony is is, is everywhere. But the thing is, with Kyrie bringing that back up again, then ESPCNN, what I like to call now, all of a sudden goes back to the whole <laughs> old bullshit of, oh, yeah, Boston's a racist city. But, and I see that I, I make the mistake of reading comments and seeing, oh, yeah, of course, it's Boston. It's a racist city. Now, let me just say, I lived in Boston my whole life. It's the most liberal city next to L.A. or California or the next liberal state other than New York and California. So if these woke leftist progressive liberals are talking about the state that they live in is so racist, then then why is it always the right-wing, alt-right conservatives who are the racist ones, right? It's just very confusing to me. It doesn't make much sense. And again, I'm a suburban white kid. Maybe I don't know. If someone wants to chime in and tell me their experience and it's different, I'm open to it. But I didn't see it growing up. So I don't know where that old bullshit comes from. Well, I hate Boston. I hate Yankees. Um, I was born in a uh, suburb of New York called Florida. Um, so we don't have those problems in Florida. Yeah, there's no racism in Florida or Alabama or anything Next like up, that. Uh, we have Julio <laughs> Jones. Oh, so speaking of Julio, he's leaving Ross's team. Right? Oh, the Falcons, I know. I know. It's another hit on Ross. But it was another hit to Cowboys fans because he was asked, well, what about Dallas? He goes, no, I want to win. <laughs> so what, so do, you think, do you think that he knew that Shannon Sharp had him on TV live? Uh, probably. I mean, I doubt that that was just spur of the moment. Like, you know, now they're talking about him did. suing. ESPN for releasing well, that because he Fox, didn't know that though. he was I think on it's Fox, oh, Fox Sports. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. Um, I, I, it's hard to believe anything that's that's on TV as some people are now watching us on the, the TV as we speak. But the, I mean, when it comes to that backdoor shit, whether he knew or not, he said it and it's out there. So now we know he does want to go to Dallas because he says he wants to win. But <laughs> Joe Stradamus might strike again because if if you remember and it's on it's on a uh, camera and it's on video and audio, so we can all go back and play the tape. Ross asked me, what do the Patriots do now to recover from watching their guy, Tom Brady, win the Super Bowl? I go, they go out and they get a stud wide receiver like Julio Jones. Now, if you look at Vegas odds, Patriots are favored to sign Julio Jones. So 
Maybe oh, Joe Stradamus strikes again. I would love... He did say he wants to play with Cam Newton. I don't know why, <laughs> but he says he wants to play with Cam Newton. Um, I think maybe it's more he wants to play with Bill Belichick, but hey. You know, I'm excited. I think this is going to be a fun season. I think the Jaguars have got some new blood. They're going to be a fun team that's finally yeah, they are. finally going to be maybe interesting if they don't fuck this up. I they think they might be. It's a weak division, They've too. Got, yeah, it is, and um, th that's exciting. We've got lots of moves being made in, in New England. And in the postseason, which is going to gonna be fun. But Tampa another, is still fun. Kansas City. They just re-signed Antonio fun. Brown, yep. which I was confused by because I thought that there was some criminal investigations going on with Antonio Brown, but I guess that's a different story. But another thing that that's still up in the air that we don't know about is the Aaron Rodgers situation. He was seen, you know, singing karaoke with uh, an acoustic it, guitar, yeah. and um, his girlfriend, some actress, I forget her name. Who cares? But he's kind of living his best life, and he just told the Packers, "Fuck off! I'm, yep. I'm not playing for you guys." So. I'm curious to see how that shakes up if he just holds out, holds out, holds out and is like, fuck it, I got to go play football and goes and plays. But he's not making it look like that he wants to stay in Green Bay. I mean, now he was in Hawaii, Hawaii, uh, Hawaii. The and, big what, island. and then he took his, what, his ex, or no, the girl's ex. It was ex a forgetting boyfriend? Sarah Marshall type thing it going was. on. Where it was so the, weird. Yes, very strange. What was it, the he's ex? He's asexual. Right. But who was the ex that he brought along? Oh, shit. Well, uh, I it, don't remember names. Was it her ex? So the girl he's dating, who is an actress, and I, it's, her name is slipping my mind right now, her ex-boyfriend showed up with his now current girlfriend. So I don't know if they're just swingers. Again, we don't kink shame. If they're into the, the foursomes and the wife swapping and all that, all the power to them. However, I believe, like most other drinking bros out there believe, Aaron Rodgers is asexual. Yeah. Like, he just doesn't care about that shit. He's just a weird dude. Yeah. And I don't think he's ever had sex. He doesn't have a kid. I mean, he was with um, a couple smokes like Danica Patrick and Olivia Munn. So if he didn't have sex with them, yeah, then but when, he was when really did Danica out. Patrick and him ever going to have time to make love? You know, as a business owner, how hard it is to work. Now imagine two people working just as hard as we do in different career fields. You're not, you're not making he, love. So he's pretty much asking, do you fuck? No, I'm not asking that at all. What I'm saying is... I can find a minute or two. I, I can... 30, all, 30 seconds. Is that, that I was going to say, that's all you need is a minute or two. Uh, but I'm saying they probably didn't have a very strong love life, uh, Aaron Rodgers and Danica no, Patrick. not when you're asexual. Uh, but speaking Damn. of hard work and grinding, um, opening up a small business isn't easy. Opening up a small distillery is definitely not easy. And doing it in Wake County, well, now you're working on damn near impossible. Brandon, what was your experience like trying to get this place open? What was, what was the grind like? Was it a day-by-day -day thing? Did you know you were going to get here? No, I didn't. Well, I was determined to get here. Did I know it was going to happen? No. I mean, it took four years from the time I started this. And I remember those. Wrong. It was almost yeah. four years ago when we met. That's when we connected. We yeah. connected and I you were saw, like. I saw you grinding. And <laughs> actually, yeah, it was that instant kinship. I was like, I can relate to what the hell he's going through. <laughs> and that's the thing I reached out to come see you. Yeah, you did. You came and hung out. And yeah. then we've been friends ever since. We talk on the phone. As much as two entrepreneurs can talk on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. You're down that pipe a little bit further than I am getting started. Uh, so I can't keep on. Oh, but you're uh, crushing your oh, brain. Man, you're crushing. You're killing this place it. Is I great. love it. Your, Thank you. Your social media is fire. <laughs> I love transparent social media. When you get to see the grind, when you get to see the reality of what's going on. Open book. Not, yeah. Yeah. You're not posting up next to a fake Ferrari saying, yeah. oh, I'm a distillery owner and I've got a nice I'm an sculpture. Yeah. With, yeah you, you know, you did it the real deal way. You know, you were like, here I am. Like... <laughs> Trying to get this concrete off of this brick wall in this building. How old is this building? It's uh, 64, 1964. Jeez. Yes. I'm not even going to do the math on that. It's um, old. <laughs> and you did a full renovation of this place. Yeah, it's been about 16 months taking this place apart, putting it back together again. And it was yeah. amazing. You put the, you did the, and you went green. You did the solar panels on the roof. Solar, actually, they were already on the roof. Oh, uh, okay. Previous owner purchased them and then just never moved in and made anything of it. So I capitalized on I that. I mean, do you, you, know, and do I you bet enjoy you, that though? Is that efficient, do you feel like? Is, uh, does it give you problems? I'm curious uh, about the solar panel thing. I mean, I th what... I'm setting the example for the community. Does it make business sense? <laughs> yes. Uh, it cuts out on our utility bills, cuts down on those. Okay. Uh, but, I mean, anything I could do to, to help try to set an example, I'm already for it. It helped that it was already an asset on the building. Sure, sure. So. Now, do you think that homeboy that put the, or homegirl, that put the uh, solar panels up on the roof, do you think they were just dicked around so much by, by the county, by the inspectors, that they never got their business open? Or uh, oftentimes that happens. What I had heard, they tried to get a business started here, and it just 
they had some troubles and didn't sure, look, look, I know you can't say it because you're in Wake County, but I'm not in Wake County. <laughs> Wake County is one of the hardest places for small businesses to get open. The, the inspectors are known to be ruthless. They're known to be tyrants. Yeah. Wake County is pro big business. That's why Apple's coming here and all the big, big corporate businesses are coming. That's why they're tearing down Snoopy's and building a yeah. just an extremely expensive big uh, money. You know, big money. That's big what money. Raleigh's all about. Um, building in Wake County, did you know it was that hard when you got started in Wake County? Would you have gone to a different county had you known? Uh, this is home for me, so the so answer no. is yes. But, <laughs> uh, I mean, yes, I would have continued to build. Okay. Did I anticipate it was going to be this rough? Uh, I anticipated setbacks. I didn't anticipate all of that. But luckily... Uh, the town here, Zebulon, yes, yes, incredibly supportive. And, and they want have, to be here. You do have a small town, right? Like, yeah. and, and so even though you're in Wade County, which is home of the capital city of Raleigh, yeah. you still have Zebulon, which is a small town, which is a cute town, um, and it's a very tight knit town. Anytime somebody's from Zebulon, they love to tell you, "I'm from Zebulon." Zebulon, you know? Z Town, yeah, <laughs> Z Town. What do you call it? Z Town. That Z -town. sounds like something yeah. from yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, um, you, you finally got the building open. Is, it, is all your hopes and dreams coming true? It, well, yeah. I, I didn't know what you to expect. You sold out. Though. You sold out first batch. Yeah, we sold out within three weeks. No distribution. Like 1,500 bottles or something? Yeah, we yielded 1,420. Um, had a little larger angel share, which is what evaporates in the barrel before you, okay. uh, when you, when you dump the barrels. But, uh, yeah, everybody has been, or all the, uh, the local communities came here, sold us out. But it's been great to be part of this revitalization effort. I mean... You know, five months ago, nobody was coming down to downtown Zebulon after five o'clock. And here we are. We've got, you know, cars all over the place. Friday, Saturday nights, we packed the house. And Tuesdays uh, also. So. Yeah, I mean, you got a half a dozen people. There's been a half a dozen people in here before we even got here. Um, and, then, and again, this is a Tuesday. Um, the show goes out on Friday. Today is Wednesday. <laughs> no, shit. Today is Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, shit. You have um, an open mic tonight. I do. Um, you rock in the house. Well, it's there's a lot going do on. Do you know who else rocks the house? Who? Demi Lovato. Ooh. Oh, what's going on with Demi Lovato? Well, Look Demi at that. Is this what the uh, uh, Chef Puhak, is this the, the crushed... The crushed Cheetos on the corn. Uh, Chef Puhak just dropped down a plate full of tailgate corn on the cob wow. with crushed oh, that's fiery the Cheetos. Cheetos. Wow. And <sighs> Muscles Po' Boy. It's bad news bears Which right I there. love Muscles, and, and I'm sure Chef Puhak's going to talk a lot about it, but Muscles you can get so cheap. Um, I mean, for $6, you can get enough Muscles to feed four people for six bucks. Mm. Um, man, these look incredible. I think I need yeah, to eat them with I, a fork, though. Yeah, I don't know where to start with these. But hey, See, he's coming around. We'll let him well. come around and he'll talk about it. Um, but you, you, you got the town. And I've always said this, and this is my entrepreneur influencer uh, bullshit of the week. Hashtag adventure. Hashtag wanderlust. <laughs> um, which if you're not following at <laughs> hashtag not official, all the wonder are lost. Yeah, I use all the worst hashtags ever. But I Fit always mom. I've always said I had to speak at a small town, uh, a small town no. convention. It was a small business. Sorry. Small town business convention, whatever, um, for North Carolina. And um when they asked me to speak, I was like, shit, I don't know what to say. And, and frankly, I can't go three words without swearing. Are you sure I'm the guy? And they said you were. Um, and really, what I, when I thought about w what I was going to say to everybody, um, which was all the, the, small, the small town managers all throughout North Carolina, and the one thing I came up with is that craft businesses, whether it be a craft restaurant, like a farm to table, a craft distillery, a craft brewery, a craft winery, anything craft, right? It gives the town something to be a part of, proud but it of. also gives them something to be proud of. Nobody's proud of their local chilies or their local Outback, <laughs> but they are proud of their local Simple Twist. They're proud of their local Old Raleigh Distillery. They're proud of their local, um, you know, uh, Hinnant Vineyard Winery. And so when you put a business like this, you, not only are you a part of the community, but the community is proud of you. And I think that's one of the, the greatest things about these small towns, especially like Zebulon. Yeah, I agree. I think that, I think people appreciate the grind. I mean, small business owners, craft, it's a grind to get up and running. It isn't easy. You got the cards stacked against you. Uh, and people appreciate the grind. And if you're sincere about it, um, you know, they see you when you're here at night. They see you here in the morning 
when I'm sweeping up cigarette butts or, or taking out the trash and down smiling. the street. And yeah. smiling. You're not, you're not bitching, fuck no. these assholes for leaving their cigarettes. What you're saying is, man, I'm so glad people partied here last night yeah. and left their cigarettes for me to put, pick up. Uh, you I know, feel that's very what blessed. You yeah, do, that right? sounds crazy, but it's true. <laughs> you know, somebody, somebody said that to me. I was picking up cigarette butts, and they were like, doesn't that just suck? Doesn't that just piss you off? And I said, no, because every cigarette butt here, they probably had a drink to go with that cigarette. Well, you'd hope so, right? <laughs> now, like, like Eric, it's weird calling him Eric, but like Tansy over here, he's a small business owner. And you were talking about people who appreciate things like that, the camaraderie. I'm sure there's an aspect, at least I hope, in a town like Zebulon, that other you know, fellow small business owners, they can kind of rally together, right? Do you, do you have that in this town where other people are kind of promoting each other, promoting yeah. you? I'm big on that. Yeah. So even when you come in here, you can order from the two restaurants down the street. Yeah. And they've made it to where they'll only deliver here. Mm. So we're trying to make it a destination yeah. for That's you. That's a big part that. of owning a small business, I'm sure, is having that sort of... Sense yeah, of camaraderie with the other ones. You got to lift each other up. If you're just thinking about yourself, uh, th- not that's just not. The way my to favorite go. quote of all time is "All tides uh, raise all ships." Right. Yes. So if you got a ship in the harbor and the tide's coming up, every every ship's coming up with it. Um, and and especially in the distillery business, I, I love sending people down here. And when people talk about, do you make bourbon? I always say we don't do bourbon here. But if you head down the road about 28 minutes, <laughs> Old Raleigh Distilleries down right. there, and they've got tons of bourbon. And we love sending people down here. Well, we got tons um, of food in front of us. We do, Chef it, Puhak, What Can is I this dive food? In or what? So that we have in front of us. First. You guys, dive in. Everybody, just use your fingers. This is Go humble tailgating first. food. Might look fancy, but it's really basic. So we've got some muscle po one. boys. Um, And we've also got Mexican street corn, uh, properly called elote. Um, And what I did is, it's almost like I made a cheesesteak with uh, Chilean source mussels, right? I broke Mm. it down with some Havarti. Um, I've got some tahine aioli in there. Tahine is like a big thing in the uh, Mexican and Central American communities. Um, It's like a chile and um, lime powder. So I made an aioli out of that and slapped it on them bad boys. Um, and then you've got the spicy corn. So you guys get after it and we'll talk about it while we eat. Man, this I is... definitely need napkins, hook, though. Hook me this. up with some, JoJo. You want to just grab it for yeah, you? Well, right before the, uh, the, the and food And Noel, too, please. Got is this like a us. pound of mussels on each po' boy? That is so much meat. <laughs> you yeah, could use was, all the muscle I you can I was generous. Get. Hey, man, we talked about it. You said show up. It's time to show up, baby. Mm, it's so good. I love the zing, the zang. Um, there's, yeah, I mean, that's what you get. You get a little bit of acidity. You have the, uh, the savoriness of the muscle because no, the, the muscle is very savory, big right? Time, yeah. But they're also very fatty. So it's like you've mm-hmm. almost incorporated it. And then there's this little sweetness on that sauce, the tomatoes, the crispiness of the, uh, the lettuce. There's so much texture. And I love the style roll that you went with. I love a good soft roll. Is this yeah. a potato roll? No, it's what a, is this? it's a Southern version of an Italian roll. And no offense to my it. southern friends, but they fucked up the Italian roll, but they made a good roll in the process. Um, it's a nice, soft Italian bread, and it's got a nice, savory taste to it. And mm. um, like you said, I did choose this dish because we're here where bourbon is. Um, and I feel like it would pair nicely with things neat or mixed drinks with bourbon in it. The elements of the bourbon, along with the funk of the mussels and the Havarti. And then you got the uh, elote over there to set yourself on fire with. The bourbon cuts through the fat so perfectly. Um, this is maybe one of the best pairings we've had on this show. Thanks, brother. That bourbon, the rye, the it, you know, because there's just a tinge of sweetness to the rye, but um, the heavy the, the body of the caramel that the the the, bur- the barrels produce in the in the bourbon, it cuts through this so perfectly. Yeah, I think. Am I saying this? Brininess, is that a word? Yes. I think the, uh, the brininess of the, the muscle muscles definitely pairs well with that rye. Stands mm. up against it, balances it well. The rye kind of stands up like a knife, right? And cuts into it and mm. contrasts the brininess and the savory element of the Havarti and the muscles. This is so fantastic. Have you guys ever done elote before? No. I'm interested to see what you guys think because it's for some, it's not for everybody. Is that the corn? Yeah, it's street corn. And like me, if you guys follow me... Well, I love me, street corn. I don't call it by uh, cultural names because I'm an uncultured fuck. Well, that's what I'm here for, man. I teach you, right? So with, with, if you follow Conspiracy Cuisine at all and know anything about my cooking, I do a lot of street food and I jazz it up. 
Street food's where it's at, man. If you with Chef Anthony Bourdain, he talks about being in the shittiest places, sitting on a child's chair on a sidewalk, and having some of the most divine meals he's ever had in like Central America, Vietnam, Taiwan. Speaking of Bourdain, did he really kill himself, or did someone you, else kill could him? Could you hand me one of those? Corns? You want to talk conspiracy cuisines? That's a real conspiracy cuisine conspiracy. So right? you'll see. <laughs> Which on should my be its own media. show in itself. There should be a whole show where we talk about conspiracies, conspiracies. Yeah. and then eat while we're doing it. Because I fucking love a good conspiracy. I had a content developer reach out to me and say, man, you should do conspiracies while you cook. That might be a thing for us. Oh, my God, us. this corn is incredible. Is that all right, Nothing Bourdain? what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> oh, my God. So did, did Bourdain kill himself, or is an Epstein thing where someone else killed him? Uh, uh, the conspir- conspiracy theorist in me thinks that he was killed. Shortly before he was killed, or excuse me. Was he not quote, working unquote, on a... A child sex trafficking. Thing? He put his he put his mitts in something that allegedly had connections to with the, Lincoln Park. To the, what did they to do the from Lincoln Park? Chester Bennington and he also killed himself, and so did Chris Cornell. And who they were I all three was involved too. Yeah, and they were all three doing this. Uh, I was touched in Hollywood, mm-hmm. and all three of them are dead. But yeah. you know what? I mean, it's all conspiracies, and you're a loony Ben if you if you believe that at all. So no, I'll get my tinfoil hat. I don't care. I love yeah, a good conspiracy. Put your conspiracy. tinfoil hat on. You're an idiot. I'll, I'll say this. I can't when three prove dudes it. working on the same film all die, it's a conspiracy. But when, when a politician dies because of Spygate, well, now we have frontline news, folks. <laughs> well, the, the we evidence doesn't line news. up. You know, you, you got a guy, yeah, he battled with heroin addiction and alcohol and substance abuse his whole life. And that, that tends to lead towards suicide in some cases. But he was found hanging from his doorknob with his bathrobe like rope around his neck. So, Strangle baiting. Yeah, I was going to say. We've all maybe, been there. Maybe there, there, there are theories maybe. about that, that he you know, was into some autoerotic asphyxiation. I heard, I heard that's how Robin Williams went. Really? Is he was uh, jerking the McGurkin and uh, giving a little tug on his neck there. Snapping the carrot. And he we don't kink snap. shame, though. We don't kink shame don't at all. We don't kink shame. So um, do it, but, just have it. Just do it safely. Um, but another, I don't know if you want to call it a conspiracy, but... I, I wanted to bring up Demi Lovato earlier because she she changed her pronouns. What in the world, man? Now listen, I don't and care. And cut her hair short. But listen, oh, and she, she can, got uglier quick. Listen, she's entitled she, to do whatever she wants. I absolute, support Demi no, Lovato. They, and, they are entitled oh, sorry, to do whatever she, they want. Yes. You fucking I, uh, savage. See, I was trying to like be open. All right. You are not woke. Demi Lovato can do whatever she wants. If she wants me to call her whatever, I'll call her whatever. I really don't care. Right? They. But Matt Siegel, <laughs> and I know you guys don't know Maddie in the morning, but Everyone in Boston knows who Maddie in the Morning is. He's the biggest radio guy in, in Boston history, probably in the, at least in the past, like, 40 years. Now, he made a joke about Demi Lovato. I don't even know what the joke was because they won't tell us about it. But he was told that they cut it, um, they dropped it off the air, and then he was told that he can't talk about that and make jokes. He lost his shit. And he is not someone to be controversial. Um, he's always been, been called, you know... Um, democratic leaning, if anything. So he really didn't, you know, push too many buttons. And he just made a joke, and they're like, no fucking way, you can do that. And he got pissed and quit on the air. The biggest on the air. On the air goes, <laughs> he said, Maddie, out. And he was he goes, if I can't say what I want to say, what is the point of any of this? So that's why I love the drinking bros lets us do whatever the hell and say whatever the hell we want. And we're not under these you know, corporate overlords that tell us what we're allowed to say and what we can't. Well, we he can made get a joke. shadow banned. Well, sure. But again, <laughs> I, don't, I think both can be true that she can do, sorry, Demi Lovato can do whatever the hell she wants if she, damn it, I, they can do, uh, this is very the, difficult for me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, we Demi. We need to send you some woke school. My whole point is they can do whatever they want. They're entitled to change their pronouns. I will call right. Demi whatever she wants to be called. I don't care about that. However, you should also be able to make jokes because we should all be equal opportunity offenders. Well, that, right? that's the problem with the whole cancel culture right now. Of course. With cancel culture, they want, they want to make themselves a victim, right, and, and a minority. But then as soon as we train ourselves up like we're supposed to be trained and be sensitive to their stuff, we're then the oppressors and the ones that are holding them down because we're like, hey, okay, they, or oh, okay, non-binary, whatever the hell you want to be called. That, we're calling you, don't call me that. That was very insensitive. And then they want to sensationalize their victimhood. And it's like, what do you, what do you, what do you want, man? I just want to be friends with you, bro. Can we just so, be friends? So the funny thing is, is that um, <clears throat> The Office was taken off of Netflix <clears throat> and there was a lot of things that, the, that <clears throat> they said that the guys on The Office said that maybe not, not go in line with Netflix. I started watching, I've seen The Office all the way through a hundred times. It's one of my favorite shows. I lo- Does anybody else here like The Office? Love it. I love, love The it. Office. So I started watching it and I was trying to think about what are all the things that they say on The Office that may or may not be 
Correct, and I've been trying to call them out. I was, I was thinking about making a video montage of it. Um, they make several Trump references. Uh, Michael Scott's a huge Trump fan in the show. But I saw one the <laughs> other day, uh, the, the episode last night. Um, I actually videoed it. And it's when they go down to the warehouse. And the girls are having their girls uh, meeting upstairs. And so Michael Scott decides to have a guys meeting downstairs in the warehouse. And he fucks the warehouse all up. But he comes back and he goes, <laughs> at the end of the day, this is a workplace. And there's only two types of people that work in a workplace, men and women. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I just, Wrong. just caught one. Just caught one. That's <laughs> that's one of the reasons why they took it off in that. Well, really, the whole first two seasons, you go back and watch that now, and you're like, you could not make that now. You could not make that but comedy now. But that's the now. problem. There is what have you? When was the last time you saw a great comedy movie? Uh, okay. 2007, yeah, 2008. Comedy is dead. You're not allowed to say anything. Step Brothers. Exactly. That was like 2010. Yeah, I love. I mean, them. comedians are afraid. Boats and hoes. <laughs> There's too many lines from that one. But <laughs> when are we just gonna get over it and bring comedy back? Because comedy is a way that you know we need some unity, right? Where everyone's calling for unity in this country. The best way is to you, laugh with each other. But you can't now. You no. can't laugh. Like if if you make like a, I don't know, like an Italian American joke, I'll laugh. I won't be offended. You know what I mean? That's in my my genes. But, like, you can't do that anymore, you know? The, the days of, like, <clears throat> satire and comedy where you can pick at everybody. You know, like Eddie, Eddie Murphy. He's a good example. He, he hit up everybody in his comedy. David man. Chappelle. David Chappelle. Get out of here. He's still David kind of David Chappelle's the goat, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's uh, Williams? Uh, Robin? No, no, no. The, uh, the, uh, he, he, Cat Williams. Cat. Yes, Cat Williams. I mean, Cat Williams, dude, I mean, you talk about offensive. That dude goes... That dude goes hard. And I love him. I think he's funny as shit. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, is, though, is that, you know, again, I come from a different background, but you really can't hurt my feelings. There's literally, no. I can't think of a single thing that you could say right now that would set me off. But I'm, I'm not everyone. Some people don't like you talking about the oh, show. Oh, should we try? background, Eric. I mean, you had military and then we have law enforcement in our blood. I mean, we, we died a long time ago in our, <laughs> in our heads and hearts. I just feel like maybe too many people are taking themselves too seriously these days. Um, nobody is above anybody else in this world. We're all no. pieces of shit uh, in this world. <laughs> I mean, we all are. You know, I talk to my wife all the time um, because she was raised. Raised, uh, extremely hard and difficult, and I and I have to remind her. I'm like, honey, listen, like you gotta have honest conversations with yourself. You gotta have honest conversations with me. We're all pieces of shit in this world, and you're having thoughts, you're having things, you do things, you want things. You know, a lot of her issues are I didn't spend enough time with the kids, or I didn't say enough nice things to the kids. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck off. Like, you're human. <laughs> fuck the kids. Yeah, fuck yeah, those just kids. Just do your best, you know? man. Yeah, do, do your, your best. Be That's what you do. You don't set out to be malice, and you try to be a better person every single day of your life, and that's what we all try, we all try to do. No one as makes me a better not, person, though. As long as you're not being a cunt. You did. Oh. I, I think that's rule number one, boys. As long as you're not going into the realm of being that word. That word that we're uh, not supposed to oh. say anymore. Well, maybe See you I next Tuesday. It. Yay. Maybe I snuck <laughs> it in there. Maybe you did. But that's you know why what? I got it out before we started. No, we all need, though. You know what makes me a better person? What makes you a better person? Kill Cliff CBD. Oh, and Ignite. Here we go. You here get the go. Ignite, you get juiced up. Yeah. And then after you're done mm -hmm. kicking today's ass, yep. you want to settle back down with some CBD, right? Yep. So go visit killcliff.com. Life is full of flavor, right? Full of it. That's why people like me and you get the little flavor saver, right? And that's the beard. What, that's what the beard's for. That's what it's It's for. really because I don't have a defined chin and I want to hide that. Is that the same reason you have the beard? Uh, no. Oh. I enjoy second treats like that corn that's going to be coming back to me in a few minutes. <laughs> and you'll just find a little piece in your beard. Well, it was developed by a Navy SEAL, Kill Cliff, and um, that's Tansy's favorite branch of the military, the Navy SEALs. And it gives you benefits. They got the best you, hair. They, that's what I've heard, at least. <laughs> it gives you benefits you need without sacrificing flavor. Flavor is important. important. Uh, overcome any obstacle with Kill Cliff CBD recovery drinks, the drink that Tansy needed to get back after his Friday night down in Dallas. Ooh. Their products help you operate at your best because, you know, there's no days off in life. That's Bill Belichick's motto. No fucking days off. And, um, and cheat every day. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but right now, Kill Cliff is running a 30% off offer. Off offer? Yeah. That's kind of tough to say. It's a it little is. tongue twist. I got my merds mixed up a little bit, but Pobody's Nerf effect, right? <laughs> <laughs> they, have, they have three awesome flavors, the Mango Tango, the Orange Crush, and Tom Brady's favorite, the Goat. Um, and for a limited time, use promo code Bros. 
D-R-I-N-K-I-N, bros. It'll get you 30% off not only the CBD products and the Ignite, but also the super cool apparel that they have. Um, or again, it's Drinking Bros, 30% off, promo code Drinking Bros. Now, Kill Cliff is offering Drinking Bros an ex- exclusive 30% off offer, right? Off offer is so tough for me to say, and I'm having a tough time with it, but I'll keep going. At least that shirt is fucking fire tonight. This, this shirt is fire. It's not a, a Kill Cliff shirt, but honestly, it could be because of the way they like to design things, Thank which you. is awesome. Um, so... Everything's in stock. Go visit the website. And when you do, make sure you use promo code Drinking Bros. It's K I L L C L I F F dot com. Killcliff.com. Promo code Drinking Bros. Take advantage of the offer. Buy a ton of shirts. Buy a couple Ignite drinks. A Dude, couple CBD. That, that shirt, every when, I saw flavor. You, when I saw you wearing the unicorn shirt, I was like, fuck, that's got to be in my life. I just ordered it. So, and I forgot to use the promo code. But you know what? Jesus Christ. I'm you, won't, you won't forget I'm to rich. use the promo code. I got that money. Oh, are you? How did that, that I'm happen? I'm so humble. I'm so humble. I just want to take this moment to say I'm so humble. I'll humble you real like, quick. I'm just after. kidding. Actually, <clears throat> speaking of humbling you, I'm going to drink honestly, some Kill Cliff Ignite and whoop your ass in basketball. I'm going to hype it up every show coming. until it happens that's in coming. July. Eric is going to wipe his ass with your face. <laughs> I'm just going to go straight to the punch. <laughs> uh, that's what I think of that, okay? Burping well, at least you know who I'm rooting for. Him. I'm going to run circles around him. We're going to make it a big production. And <laughs> like I, I, it's adding me and fuel him, to the fire. Me and him, one-on-one basketball. It's coming. The game is coming. Who do you, who do you put your odds on? You're on mybookie.com right now with $100 in your hands. This guy versus me. A little game of one-on-one. He's sizing you guys I'm up. looking at the Pitching shoes. Pitching the rubber yeah. through the no, hoops. Like, like any wrestler, he's looking at your crotch uh, first. Your crotch. That's what I do. I'm going to take you with skateboarding. I'm going to go with him with some uh, balls. Oh. oh. That dude couldn't put a pigskin in a rope net on his best Exactly. Day. <laughs> on his best I don't even day. need to say anything to that, okay? This dude plays rugby. I saw him play. He's not so bad. What's going to end up happening? He's going to deck you because he plays rugby and gets tired of your shit. Yeah. yeah. You might gonna, win, yeah. <laughs> but it's, you're going to lose. It's hey. mainly his voice. I'm just going to fucking knock his teeth out for once. Try to break his larynx. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, my what? So I don't so hear I you think he said speak. cervix. <laughs> That's the surgery you so had you earlier, just, right? Yeah, cervix yeah. Surgery. <laughs> you just poured me a, a glass. Of, is this batch one? It is batch it one. It is batch one. Yep. Batch one is sold out. Completely sold out. So, yeah. I, I mean, I feel special that I will be able to say that I got... I'm a little bit butthurt that I didn't come in here and get a <laughs> bottle of, yeah, of, of batch one. Seriously. Um, if, by chance, June comes around, I would like to put a bottle of batch one. I know it's illegal. I'll put it in my distillery. I don't care. I'll put it in a fucking lockbox under glass. There you go. Just so I can say I have a bottle of glass one... Uh, a, <laughs> Class. What if you're Boy, this whiskey's really kicking in. If you just in, display it, rock. is that still a violation? It is. Um, there was another distillery here locally that got yeah. fucked in the ass by the man, um, which, again, in my day, was rage against the machine. In today's time, it's rage with the machine. Everybody likes the man. I still fucking hate the man. Uh, <clears throat> but the man did find a distillery for displaying a bottle that they made for another company. Oh, my God. And their bar. Yeah, it was really funny. Um, and I may not have all the facts <laughs> not on that. Funny. But, uh, I know it sucks, <laughs> and they hired lawyers and the whole thing. But... If I get a chance to get batch one, batch two, do you think, now listen, I'll be honest with you, when I made my first batch of rum, it sucked. It was terrible. I go back now and I try to buy it up off the shelves if I see it on the shelves um, and, and the ABCs, uh, and it's only had like some really, really bad ABCs that they still have it. Um, I've had one, dude. It wasn't, it didn't suck. And people say that all the time, but I, me, I think it sucks. I would tell you. Do you think your batch number two is going to be better than your batch number one? I think it'll be different than batch one. Um, I think the difference also between, let's say, the rum community and the whiskey or bourbon community is they're not as forgiving. You get one shot and that's it, which is true. Unfortunate bourbon, bourbon because guys it takes do years. Have a, we have a bur- uh, an affluent yeah. bourbon community here, and we're in yeah. Kentucky's backyard, so the standard's high. I have found that uh, they'll give craft distillers, they'll buy your bottle, they'll put it in a shelf. Yeah. The question is, will we, they find that second bottle by that third bottle? And, uh, and we'll find out in batch two. Now, you know, listen, what, what, on this one, I was trying to think of it earlier. And, and it may be the bread, the softness of the bread. Because I always think that, if, <laughs> and this is no joke, when I'm drinking bourbon, I'm drinking whiskey, I like to clean my palate with bread. Um, I like to use the Hawaiian rolls, which are sweet. Oh, but yeah. it sops everything up in my mouth. But because bourbon is made of predominantly shit that bread's made out of, Um, the good yeast and everything and and the wheats and all those things, rye, whatnot. Um, But I was trying to think of on the 
when I first tasted this and I was trying to give my sommelier <clears throat> notes on there, the finish, I was, it was escaping me. It just hit me just now. Creme brulee. The hard, the hard caramelized shell. The when you first yeah, crack the, the creme crack. brulee, that very top layer of uh, caramelized sugar. Yeah. That's what I get on the finish of this bourbon. I can see that. Yeah, I get something similar. I always get caramel notes. Um, but as I was developing the blend, one thing I found, if I rested it on my tongue, I got very sweet notes. Mine were more cotton candy-like. But everybody's palate's a little bit different. Well, it's always going to be what you remember. That's exactly right. So, you right. know, yeah. I didn't eat a lot of cotton candy as a kid because the fare was too expensive. <laughs> my parents did not take me to the fair very much. And if they did, it was a very limited budget. I won my goldfish, we went the fuck home. Um, but creme brulee <laughs> now... Balling on a budget. No, you were just wrestling gators. <laughs> I did not wrestle he, gators. He, he just told me before the show he wrestled a gator. I damn, never said I wrestled in the swamps. Gator, ever. By uh, St. Petersburg. Nope. Peters. I, I don't live anywhere near St. Petersburg. That is 100% St. Augustine. Made up story. He's just he making listen, it up. It doesn't matter which saint it was. He liked little boys <laughs> he's, regardless. So. He's, he's mad I said you're going to wipe I am, listen, no, I'm not mad. <laughs> I, I, I use it as Shake motivation, it and that's fuel to the fire, because everyone on Facebook apparently thinks, oh, well, Tansy used to be in the military, and then he was a I cop, saw that. so he must be good at basketball. I well, listen, that. guys, you know? normally we close the show out with a drink and bro of the week, but this show, we're going to close it out with something a little bit more uh, intense, and, and it's something that's... It's, yes. it's, it's, Push up content. Well, you guys, <laughs> you guys just kind of, you guys just kind of ruined it for me. Um... You're I'm going to let you guys talk. Let me bring it yeah. up. Let me you're bring ruined it, it for taking it too long. That's why. So do you have a professional team? You said that you're a wolf pack guy. Do you have any professional? For what, what sport? Basketball, football. I mean, who's your, your professional team that you watch the most? Professional. I said was, the Celtics. Uh, I like the Seas. Well, I lived in Boston a couple of years. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you live in Boston, it's hard to not roof Right. Up. Right. Uh, I mean, to be honest, when you come to NFLs, I just like seeing greatness. Like so you love Tom is. Brady, then? Because he <laughs> yes. is the greatest. He, the guy had a killer season last year. It's hard not to like the guy. I mean, he's Personally, unbelievable. It's, uh, you got a whole team rallied around him. So yeah. that's fantastic. He's the GOAT. Well, guys, I, I, and, I, and if you're still with us on this show, please do not, do not turn off the podcast. Uh, I know it's the end, but I save the best and the worst for the end. Um, Here we go. On May 19th, 2021, Officer Chris Oberheim, uh, badge number 703, was killed in the line of duty. That was just last week, folks. Um, was, was killed in the line of duty while serving in Champaign, Illinois, with the Champaign, Illinois Police Department. Chris leaves behind his wife, four daughters, uh, hundreds of men and women mourning his loss. Chris was a devoted husband, a father. Uh, served his police department with the courage and honor. Uh, this senseless act of violence, it was a call for service, for fuck's sakes. A uh, call for service means that you're going to the call uh, to check on somebody. Um, they knew it was going to be kind of a domestic because the downstairs neighbor could hear yelling. Um, two or three officers were dispatched. <clears throat> Upon arrival and meeting the suspect, the suspect pulled out a gun hastily and shot Chris uh, in the face, I believe, uh, killing him instantly and then wounding another officer. Um, so just a senseless murder. Um, there's tons of people mourning his loss. A devoted husband, father, he served his apartment with courage and honor. Uh, the community has been turned upside down by this. The media has taken the stance. Um, uh, they have glorified the murderer. Right. Um, they showed the murderer on on the newscast with angel wings. I have a huge problem with it. These guys reached out to me. A couple of guys from that department uh, reached out to me um, and showed me what the news and and on another show with Drinking Bros, we're going to actually talk a lot about that. But the news um, spent the whole coverage talking about the murderer. Um, and the murderer was killed in this incident. Yeah, he was shot um, the other officer that was shot um, was able to uh, gain his bearings back and 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 finish the the suspect off. And there's uh, no fucking protest. Win in the fight. No, there's no looting. Well, there is. No, there, there's protest and there's looting, but it's all on the reason. side of the murderer right. who shot the cop first. I mean, was, the, was the fentanyl in the cop system? Maybe that would have helped him. Sure, uh, maybe. Um, but the, the community in Champaign, listen, their officers are already bleeding uh, out. Uh, they have had a record number of, of officers quit uh, in the last That's year. They're down, they're down to about seven officers shift. 
Um, I, I believe that violence, and I, I'm going to look up the stats, but just coming from some of the guys I talked to, violent crime is up 182%, according to them. 182%, the crime rate is up, with seven officers working the shift. Um, those seven guys that are working the shift are, uh, oh, she bought a hat. Look at that. Put it on. You bought two hats. Can you put one on for us? Let's see what you look like. Oh, get, get in front of one of these cameras. Get in front of these cameras. You look great. <laughs> and you look better with a hat on. Yep, go right up, right up close. A look little at bit that. closer. Hey, there she little is. A little closer. Oh, yeah, all right. damn. <laughs> Be sure to watch yourself on YouTube later. <laughs> Drinking Bro Sports Tailgate Legends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, she. Did, did, they give you a, did they give you some crayons? You say go Marines? I eat those crayons all the time. <laughs> we love our veteran community out here. That's what Drinking Bros is all about. Uh, um, but, you know, this officer is into Watch was 51921. You can go to, and we're going to put his GoFundMe up. It's uh, Chris Oberheim, um, or Oberheim. If I'm fucking that name up, I'll apologize in Chinese. I'll apologize in Taiwanese. Um, whatever country you want me to apologize in, um, Mr. Uh, officer Oberheim or Oberheim, Oberheim. It sounds like a very Jewish name, actually. Oberheim, is that Jewish, Noel? Noel knows everything. He's the smartest guy in this crew. Oberheim, Oberheim, what is that, Jewish or German? Polish? I don't know. Uh, but, Either way, uh, he was a hero. Right. Uh, life was it's taken organized too soon. by Brian Greer, and we'll post that up on uh, there. But, you know, we want to end this show, uh, you know, in solidarity for the police. Look, guys. I would never tell you to quit that the police department. There's somebody's got to be there to hold the line. Um, Chef Puhak, you you've got deep roots in, in law enforcement. I, I left law enforcement to to open a distillery and be a podcaster, but you're still holding the line, and we love you guys. We cherish you Thank guys. You, it is a noble profession, despite what any of these comedians, what any of these fuck faces say. That is a noble profession, and you guys are doing a great fucking job, and we appreciate it. Guys from Eric Tanzi, uh, Joe Puhak there from Conspiracy. Cuisine, Boston Joey, Boston Blue Eyes. <laughs> you can file, follow him at, uh, at at Boston Blue Eyes on Instagram. At follow Boston Conspiracy. Joe 16, actually. Oh, is it? What is it? At Boston Joe 16. Let's so get those 15 followers more, you up. Motherfuckers get them up, you baby. Get no, them 16's up. my number, baby. Oh. And uh, <laughs> Conspiracy Cuisine. That's yep. easy to find. Easy. It's you Facebook, can, Instagram, yep. TikTok, YouTube. Just look me up. And you're, you've been you've been going heavy on the TikTok. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're still on TikTok, hit them up there. There's some funny videos, some really good, uh, some good value content there um, in the cooking realm. Uh, Brandon, what is your social media handles here for Old Raleigh Distillery? Uh, pretty easy. Old, old Raleigh Distillery. And that's old with an E. O with an E. O L D E. O L D E. Oh, -E. -E. -L -D -E. 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 you fancy. Brandon McCraney, which is straightforward. I'm boring. Uh, <laughs> B R A N D O N M C C R A N E Y. Yes, man. Well, listen, we appreciate you having us here. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, coming. And this has, been, awesome. this has been a great show. And next time we get a celebrity guest in town, we're going to try to bring him over here and pump this up. Brandon, uh, he came, we came at him um, with, what, two days' notice, three days' notice on this show? It was, it was tight. It yeah. was tight. <laughs> it was tight. You know, it was, uh, we fly by the seat of our pants with Tailgate Legends. We never know where we're going to be because we don't know what the game of the week is going to be and if we're going to get tickets for it, if we're going to be able to fly to it um, with COVID and everything. And, and so the hockey plan that we had for this week kind of fell through because they're still not tailgating. Hockey's open, but they're still not tailgating for it. But I think our next show might be a hockey tailgate. And then our following on June 8th, June 8th, Drinking Bros, we're going to be at the Brick House. Uh, and then... Fucking, I don't know the name of that band. As We All Float, my band will be playing directly <laughs> after the podcast. As so we stick all around. Float. So stick around. Stick around and watch us rock your music. fucking world after. They are pretty good. They're pretty decent. They're great. Uh, as long as Boston Blue Eyes doesn't sing. Lord help us all. No, I let uh, my guitar sing for me. I let him sing one. I heard him sing one time and I almost just saved him by jumping up on the mic myself. And I'm tone deaf as fuck. Uh, I can sing a lot as more set and that's about all I can you, key in. You, 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 I don't know. That was really it? good. That was good. You hit it? You hit it. Yeah. Because I love that we made that you gave with a name and I make it enough around me. Oh, my. Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs> and every time you scratch your neck down someone else's back, I hope you feel it. <laughs> You're supposed to sing. With You're an me. idiot. <laughs> no, after that, after you shit on me, that's the way it's going to fucking end. Is you doing yeah. the fucking acapella no. by yourself with no I'm fucking out. music. Mic drop.